My name's John Randall, I'm a GP uh, and have been a GP in East Lancashire for nearly 30 years. I've also been involved in the uh, rollout of the vaccine programme, particularly in Blackburn with Darwin, and it's been a thoroughly enjoyable experience seeing people work together and I've learnt a lot from colleagues and uh, pharmacists and nurses, so I've taken a keen interest in the programme. My name's Catherine Randall and I am the Deputy Head of Safeguarding for NHS England, NHS Improvement. And I've been working over the last four months undertaking vaccinations in the community for COVID-19. My name is Nurul Islam, I'm a pharmacist and I run the pharmacy called Brunch of Pharmacy in Burnley. Currently we have the vaccination site in Stony Home in Burnley where we are targeting as many Asian minority ethnic population of Burnley to get vaccinated. We do provide the service for the whole of Burnley and further afield. And at the moment we are trying our best to get areas where there is a lack of uptake in the vaccine, get them vaccinated as quickly as possible. Do the vaccine hurt and can you drive after taking the vaccine? It really shouldn't hurt. Some people say that they feel a small prick in the, the, top, the top of their arm and sometimes they might have a bit of an achy arm after the vaccination but there shouldn't be much more than that and you will be able to drive. What we say with, um, if you've had the Pfizer vaccination, we, we've asked you to stay in the clinic for about 15 minutes and then you would be safe to drive. Have we actually had any, um, any issues with the vaccines locally? You know? well, there were in April when there was issues nationally with a supply problem, but that's improved dramatically over the last few weeks. And indeed, for example, in the center that we're here today, I think they've done nearly 6,000 in, in a fairly short, yeah, yeah, in a fairly short period of time, which is incredible, both in terms of the workforce, the team around it, the supply, and most importantly, the community who are coming along to have their vaccine. When we started, um, Burnley was lower than the national average generally, but uh, Stoneham and Danes House areas, which are predominantly the Bangladeshi and Pakistani Asian communities, had a much lower, about 23% uptake in the vaccines. Since then we've been operating and we've managed to vaccinate uh, a significant amount of the local population. We, when we started it was around 2-3% uh, of the Asian population using the service and currently we're operating where there's about 30% of the people coming in to get vaccinated are from the local Asian population. At the moment we have reached nearly 6,000 vaccines so that's a tremendous effort. We've been working with the local population. We've got people from the Northern Community Network, the Jinnah Trust itself, the Lancashire Fire and Rescue Service, Lancashire Volunteer Partnership, Bangladesh Welfare Association, in order to help promote the vaccine service in the area and get as many people vaccinated. Is there any previsible female patients that may need to remove the outer clothing? Yes, absolutely. This is really important for us um, in the clinics that if a lady comes in and she requires that privacy and dignity, we will do absolutely everything to make sure that she feels comfortable and that her dignity is protected and supported. In terms of travel, uh, do you provide certificate to pro uh, prove inoculation? Well, not at the moment. There isn't a, a formal policy. But when people come for their vaccination, they're asked quite a lot of questions and uh, a record is made of that vaccine and also the booster vaccine. And that gets uploaded onto the GP notes. Now, I've had a look myself. I've downloaded the NHS app and it is possible to see what vaccines you've had. So that probably is going to be sufficient. But that's going to be a national decision about how we get certificates or proof for people. There isn't a formal uh, certification process at the moment. And, uh, whether we do need the, that evidence going forward, uh, we don't know yet, but there may be some national guidance. But at the moment, you can um, get that information downloaded onto your phone. Are there any issues that you're finding with the patients that you would like to highlight? Um, well, people must realise they're coming for a vaccine, so it would help if they wore appropriate clothing. Something we need to get to the top of their arms, so if they could wear uh, loose fit clothing or something that they could pop over the shoulder. That would help uh, and make the process a lot quicker as well. Now, with more parents against child vaccination uh, program than the adults, uh, what would you say to them as a health professional? Well, at the moment, vaccinations in children and young people, we're not vaccinating formally. They're not licensed for use in this country, although 
in the US and Canada, they are now offering the Pfizer vaccine to over 12 year olds. It's likely we're going to follow suit fairly soon and indeed there are trials going on in this country. The vaccine is really safe. COVID infection isn't safe, so I'd encourage parents to think about that carefully. We do know that currently between 10 and 18 year olds are probably the most common people who are now being affected by COVID vaccine. And whilst most children are not badly affected, some children are, and indeed, sadly, there's been rare cases where children have died of COVID-19. So it would be important to be vaccinated, but perhaps more importantly than that, is that if they get infected, they could spread that to their friends, family, to parents and, and, and more vulnerable folk like their grandparents. So they're a really important group to think about being vaccinated. And they're not just protecting themselves, they're protecting their community. The other thing to think about is whilst we've still got unvaccinated people, the infection's still around us. So there's more risks of things like mutations and the virus changing up. And sadly, coronavirus, is not going to go away. It's going to be with us really probably for, for the time being. So we need to vaccinate everybody. How many designated centres are there in Burnley and how can we find the nearest one to us? Okay, so we'll be operating from our new site at Stony Mundane's House Community Centre as we are the main vaccination site. The alternative to the vaccination site is in the Burnley Town Centre in the mall. And going forward, in the next couple of weeks, we will be offering a, a, a vaccination bus where we will pop up in uh, certain communities, certain areas, and help uh, vaccinate those populations there and make it convenient for them to get vaccinated. That's in conjunction with the NHS and Lancashire Fire and Rescue Services. Um, we will be operating walk-ins as well as uh, booked appointments. In general, do you have maybe a number of how many vaccinations you've personally administered and what your overall experience have been? So since the middle of December of 2020, I have uh, been able to uh, undertake probably hundreds of vaccinations. That's either been in a, a mass vaccination site, or it's been in a, a nursing home, or whether it's been in a GP setting, or even in the community such as here today. So lots of experience vaccinating um, people from the age of 18, and the eldest uh, citizen that I vaccinated was 103. So it's been a, a, a huge difference in age, but it's been a fabulous experience, ensuring that we keep our um, patients safe, making sure that the patients keep themselves safe, but also their families and communities. Uh, you're only operating three days, and how do you manage the crowd and Sure, social distancing. As of next week, we will be operating from six to seven days a week. We'll be offering the service between 9 a.m. and 6 p.m. We were only operating three days due to the fact that we had limited supplies of the vaccines. We're moving sites to Stony Home and Danes House Community Centre, which has larger facilities, larger car parking, which means that we can ramp up our vaccine capabilities. We maintain our social distancing through having uh, volunteers who work at the site from Lancashire Fire and Rescue Service and Lancashire Volunteer Partnership, St John's Ambulance, the Gina Development Trust who come in, wipe down services and chairs once people have left and maintain those distances between patients. We need to keep to the rules, we wash our hands, we wear our masks and we keep to the space that's um, been asked of us. Again, it's keeping to those rules that we all know about and we hear about every day. What vaccinations are uh, available and being prescribed to people? Currently we have three vaccines that are licensed in the UK. Uh, from our side we are offering two different vaccines. There's the AstraZeneca vaccine as well as the Pfizer vaccine. How can you make an appointment for the jab? Well you can make it uh, online or call 119 um, or you can contact your pharmacy or your GP surgery who can signpost uh, how to do it. And if anyone's struggling to get a booking, whether they have either language barriers or sort of um, IT issues or if they've got digital illiteracy problems, they can either ring the pharmacy on 01282 830 979 and we can help try and uh, book them into the, uh, on the NHS booking website. If they want, they can ring the Jinnah Centre or they can ring the Bangladesh Welfare Association, who will be more than happy to help them get that vaccine booked. If somebody had a, let's say, major phobia of needles or vaccinations, yeah. how would you deal with that? Well, first of all, reassure them it's not unusual. We're all fearful of some things, and 
it's not uncommon to be fearful of, a, of an injection. It is, you know, a, a needle in the arm. But I, I'd encourage people to come along, just at least talk it through. They're not alone. A worry about a needle is actually quite common. And a, a lot of people who are fearful of needles, fearful of injections, you have to empathise and understand that that's, that's a, in many ways a natural thing. Most of us don't particularly like an injection. Some of us are really fearful. I, I'm, for example, I'm, I'm scared of heights and I know that that's an ir irrational thing. But just talking through um, the injection that it's relatively painless and if you sort of make that feel, person feel comfortable, most people will have that vaccine and then they'll say to you, well, it wasn't as bad as I thought, really. There are some trials of uh, some vaccinations that are going to be done uh, via a spray up the nose, so that may be an option going forward. We do that, for example, with influenza in children. We give them a spray up the nose. So then that may be coming, maybe not immediately, but perhaps within a few months' time. So that may be a, a hope for those people as well. But encourage people still to come down and at least talk through it. Most people who are fearful of, of, of a needle will, in the end, have a va a vaccination and they're okay afterwards. It's sometimes one of those things, it's the thought is worse than the actual injection. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for answering all questions. My pleasure. It's an amazing programme, it's just, I'm glad to be part of it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for doing the interview with Dr Catherine. Thank you. Thank you for being a nurse and saving lives. <laughs> <laughs> right. I think I should say that. Well, that's it from us. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank no you problem. for your time. Yeah. You're supposed to say, you've been amazing, you've been a great help. We yeah. really Just appreciate it. We, 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 we appreciate it. I've got well, biscuits in the kitchen for you. Go enjoy so every 20, every 20 people vaccinated saves one life. Mashallah. Yeah, and we've done 6,000. And there's a statistic from the government that says for every 20 people that are vaccinated, that's one life saved. So we've, we feel like we've achieved quite a lot in this short period of time. You're doing an amazing job. Thank you so much. Yeah. I'm amazing as well. You're just, you see. You're amazing.